This week, Dallas All-Star Marty Turco. The NHLPA presents Be a Player, brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2003. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to Be a Player. I'm Brett Lindros, coming to you this week from the All-Star Game in South Florida. Before I came down here to check out the action, I had the opportunity to visit with Stars goalie Marty Turco. With the departure of Ed Belfour, Marty took over as the number one man in Dallas this year and has been having an all-star season. Here's part one of our Be A Player profile with Western Conference All-Star, Marty Turco. Blackson and shot. Oh, what a save by Marty Turco. Shoots. Save Turco. He's got the puck on the left. Rebound. And Brunette can't beat Turco. <laughs> Was it hard not to get involved in hockey growing up in Sault Ste. Marie? Uh, I don't even think I had a cho much of a choice. Uh, I was on skates before I can even remember. Uh, as the story goes, I was walking and months later my dad had me on skates, but being from Sault Ste. Marie, we had a lot of hockey heritage. Uh, you know, my grandfather had never missed a Greyhound game until he passed away, you know, some 40, 50 some years. And so it was, it, was, it was in our blood and it certainly was in uh, Sault Ste. Marie's hockey rich environment. Why did you decide to go to university hockey when junior hockey is right in your back door and it's such a big part of life in Sault Ste. Marie? It makes so much more sense for myself to, to go the college route and try to get a scholarship. And nothing was certain at this point. I could have played in the NHL as an 18-year-old, but uh, to, to prove myself as number one and get an NHL deal in two, two years, it, it wasn't realistic for myself, and I knew that at an early age. You had a lot of great years in Michigan. What was the actual hockey like, though? It was crazy to walk into our rink. Uh, you know, I felt sorry for other goaltenders coming in there. Uh, well, the way our fans treated them, it was, it was 7,000 people, but it was the craziest environment you ever seen hockey in, in my lifetime and still to this day. It was an environment that I knew I was going to be in for four years and, uh, and then just grow as a person and grow as an athlete, and that's what they wanted. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And in four years, there wasn't one rink in, in our league that I won every game in. And, and we won a lot of hockey games there. We had some great teams, and that's how competitive it was, and that's how hard it was to win college hockey games and, and other people's ranks. And then the NCAA tournament was so much fun for myself and my teammates and for my family and, and friends who came down and had a chance to experience it. Uh, and at the end of those four years, I remember uh, I would do it all again and pass away the chance at the NHL because uh, that's how much it meant to me and that's how much fun it was. Do you remember your first NHL game? I was really excited. Uh, you know, wasn't sure how you know how I was going to take us and how I was going to take it. In the first period, uh, you know, we went down five on four, and uh, the puck came into our zone, and, and I got it relatively easy. And I went to shoot it off the glass and dump it out and to aid our teammates in the penalty kill. And this is maybe a penalty. Got a little too excited and ended up throwing it over top of the glass, and uh, it was a pretty hard shot. It was going right at this guy, and I got a little nervous. I didn't want to kill this guy or something. They ended up catching the puck, and uh, we went down five on three. Later in the first period, it's still nothing, nothing. Uh, we go down five on four again, and almost identical play. Puck comes to me pretty easy, and this time I'm going over the top. I said, I'm not going off the glass. I'm going over everyone's heads with this one. Someone ended up coming right down the middle, so I had a last second switch and shoot it off the glass. And he did it again. Same guy caught the puck. <laughs> yeah, same guy caught the puck again. I remember Daryl Sidorsky and over to me, you know, Hitchcock was yelling at him to yell at me, and he didn't have to say a word. He just saw me laughing. He's like, all right, don't do it again. Welcome to the NHL. What was it like being Ed Belfour's understudy, and what were some of the things you took from that relationship? Well, there was... Um, there's a lot of things that I've learned from Ed. I was lucky enough to, to be around both Cup Finals years. I was played the years in the minors, but got called up as a third guy. And for two months, had not had a chance to watch a goaltender that was on top of his game, was probably the best goaltender in the world. So that was a great experience for myself. And you know, I told myself uh, prior to the season to take advantage of the opportunity you know, that I have. I got a Hall of Famer here that's playing out of his mind, that's working his tail off. Don't be an idiot and, and pay attention. Your second season with Dallas, you're heading into training camp. What was your mindset like? Did you want to be the number one guy? Uh, I was never trying to outplay out Eddie. Uh, 
ever. It was uh, patience was a virtue for for myself, and in more than one ways, patience was huge. Uh, being a backup, and uh, but the thing that always kept me going more than anything was was the big picture. And, in the media, talk to me a lot about, and you know, similar to, to what you asked me, did you want to be the number one? Well, of course I wanted to be number one, and, but the bigger picture was the most important thing for me. You know, as a 20, 26 year old, uh, the future was ahead, and everything that I wanted was uh, looked like it was, it was coming my way. But just had to remain patient, and, and then when the time did come, be the best goaltender you, you could be. It's now time for Be A Player Trivia. To play, send your answer to NHLPA.com slash Be A Player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2003 game courtesy of EA Sports. All other correct responses will be entered for a chance to win an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, visit NHLPA.com and click on Be A Player. Who is the only active player to score 20 or more goals in 15 consecutive seasons? Next, Marty Turco is courtside with the Mavs. You always like to see the home team win, especially, I don't want to see anybody here see me cheer against the Mavericks tonight. <laughs> One of the great things about being an All-Star is getting the chance to meet the players from the other NHL teams. When I was in Texas, I took Marty Turco to a Dallas Mavericks basketball game and we had the chance to meet Steve Nash. Perhaps the best Canadian to ever pick up a basketball. But before we get to that, Mavs owner Mark Cuban invited us to stop by the filming of his television show. We had a very special guest. It's a post sports frenzy. Up next, and this Be a Player profile. Almost live from the center club of the American Airlines Center, it's the Mark Cuban Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Gordon McCann. We're here at the Mark Cuban Show. We're waiting for Emmett Smith. Let me ask you a question. You a big fan of the Cowboys? Yeah, uh, big fan of them. Cheer them pretty good round. Not especially now that I live here in Texas. Uh, when I was younger, I, I wasn't cheering for the America's team being Canadian, but uh, now we're here. They're they're good sports. Now, what about uh, your good friend Brian Greasy? You're watching him on Sundays. You got your Bronco hat on, or what? What's his story there? I always cheer for the Broncos, and you know what? I actually cheered for them when uh, when I was younger. I, I was a big fan of John Elway's. Love the orange jerseys. I think I'm a fan of ugly jerseys. I don't know why. <laughs> I liked the Canucks when I was younger. They had some god awful ones too. All right, Thanks for having us. Emmett. Looks good, eh? You gonna be a Dallas Cowboy next year? I plan on being a Dallas Cowboy. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> that's if, what I want to hear. If for some reason that Jerry don't want me, can I be a, a water boy or something on your boat? Oh, yeah, you're something, yeah. I could, I could pass it off to Nash. I could pass it off to Finn and make sure Dirk get it in the corner. Thanks a lot for having us down oh, today. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Very cool. Oh, man. You guys hey, are good man. smoking. It's awesome. Yeah. Top of the league. You know, we thought we were doing well, feeling good about ourselves, and then you guys well, run the table. The then, then you run the table oh, on yeah, us. It should be a good one. And Vince, uh, you know, all world that guy. Yeah, he is. He but is. Uh, we're going to tri triple team on the Dark Super Bowl. That's fine. That's fine. We got Steve Nash. We're, we're pulling for Steve tonight. I think. That's right. We're going all Canadian. Right? All right. What are you enjoying most? These guys look like they're an exciting team. They look like they can put numbers down and get it going. Yeah. What I find most exciting is uh, not the not the flashy stuff or the shots, but uh, I really enjoy the, the hard work down low by the big guys uh, to see how agile they are. It's comparative maybe to you know the equipment we wear and uh, the stuff we could try oh, to do in the crease, watching the big guys make the plays down low. Uh, that's fun for me. And D-man in front of the net helping you out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Throwing like some elbows around. guys are and as agile it, it is amazing uh, but throw any number one of these guys on the skates imagine what they could do <laughs> what do you think we got a closer game now Mavs are in front a little bit here feeling good about it 
feel real good, especially with the energy levels picked up a lot. Yeah, crowd, crowds have got into it now. This is a great game, though. You mentioned two of your favorite teams here. Oh, Vince nearly fouled them right there. I know. Yeah, two of my favorite teams coming down here. You always like to see the home team win, especially I don't want to see anybody here see me cheer against the Mavericks tonight. <laughs> oh, I'd be in trouble. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. I see, I want to cheer, but I can't. I know, it's tough. Got to sit on your hands. But we got Steve Nash with the ball. Nash has the ball. The game's in his hands. All right, Marty. Yeah. 113 Mavs, 102 Raptors. Good night. Great game. I Good like time. It. Great time. Let's go say to Steve Nash. Yeah, what do you let's think? go talk to him. Good old name, right. boy. That's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys. Hey, good to see you again. You too. How you doing? Good. How you doing? What's up, Steve? How are you? Good yourself? Playing well. Not bad. Yourself? Okay. Wish I was off the start like you. Uh, you guys are playing good, huh? Best yeah. team in the league right good. now, really. Well, we have a pretty good team this year. Yeah, well, we're working on a lot of guys. Yeah. yeah. yeah some good players came in. and We got a lot of guys that from other teams are like, hey, you know, your lineup's yeah. pretty scary. Oh, it which is. is fun for me to yeah. sit back and watch yeah. this stuff all yeah. night. You'll figure out some fun out there tonight. Yeah. yeah I like good. the big scoops at the end there. Oh, <laughs> loving those off the glass. Well, good luck, buddy. Let's Thanks, man. We'll see you. Yeah. Game's be good. Out. Hopefully, I can come out and see you guys play a little bit more. That'd be nice. Yeah. Okay. We'll be looking Thanks, for man. you. Good to see Welcome. You again. Yeah. No problem. Nice okay. See you. Okay. See you, see you guys. Be a Player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. Mike Cavanaugh of Hamilton, Ontario asked Marion Gabrick, how has off-ice training helped you become a better player? Hey Mike, uh, it's, uh, it's been, you know, it's, it's a big deal, you know, to, to train off-ice and uh, it helped me a lot, you know, especially before uh, I came uh, uh, in, after my draft to NHL and it helped a lot, you know, it's a big deal and, and uh, I, think, I think it's important for uh, every player to do that, especially in, in the young age. Young star Rick Nash is next. Hopefully at the end of the year everything will uh, come out and uh, hopefully Calder Cup will be uh, one of the nominations for it. Time now for a Be A Player Hit Parade featuring Matthew Good with Weapon. Great addition to recent All-Star Weekends has been the Young Stars game. One of the players to watch is Columbus rookie Rick Nash. The first overall pick in the 2002 entry draft is having a terrific season and is a leading candidate for Rookie of the Year honors. Here's Rick Nash on Next Generation. It's almost like a religion back home. Uh, hockey on Saturday night, watching the Leafs and uh, going out and playing road hockey every day. And, uh, early morning practices, Saturday morning, so it's hard not to, uh, it's hard not to get into it back home. With the number one selection in the draft, we select from the London Knights, Rick Nash. I never really expected to go, uh, to go number one with all the hype that uh, Jay Bomeister had, but uh, I guess Columbus really showed a lot of confidence in me, training up for me and taking me number one overall. And, now it just uh, puts a lot of pressure on me because I owe them a lot to, uh, to show them the confidence that they had in me. My goal was to make the team and I think they had all expectations on me to make the team as well so uh, 
It was lucky enough for me I had a good camp and got to play with uh, Grant Marshall and Mike Sillinger all camp and all exhibition games and we were clicking and I think that's what uh, finalized the deal for me to, uh, to stay up here this year. Turnover, Sillinger, rebound, and it's Rick Nash, first NHL goal! It was, it was pretty exciting just to, uh, just to score the first game and you know we were guys playing in the NHL and they start their career, that's so the big first thing they're waiting for is their first goal. And, Lucky enough for me, it came in, uh, came in the very first game, and it was really exciting. Rick Nash wants number 11. Cuts in on the right side, and he gets a weak one away. Rebound, scores! You don't really know what to expect as the season goes on. You don't know what to hit you, whether it's injuries or, or whatever. You just try to take, take it and make it into a short term, whether you're going out there every night and scoring goals or making assists or making key plays and just being a key part of the team. And hopefully at the end of the year, everything will... Uh, come out and uh, hopefully the Calder Cup will be uh, one of the nominations for it. It's pretty exciting when you, uh, when you think about it last year at this time on the bus or going to school and right after school going straight to practice and straight home to your billets. So it's, it's pretty amazing that you finally make it here and you're, uh, you're finally settled in here. You're living in Columbus on your own. You're 18 years old. It's, it's pretty amazing when, uh, when I last year at this time you're in junior and in high school. It's, uh, it's a huge jump, but uh, really enjoying it. Okay. Scores! Rick Nash! Be a Player Trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2003. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Who's the only active player to score 20 or more goals 15 consecutive years? 20 or more in 15 consecutive years. Robotai? I was going to say Ronnie France. Right? Yeah, Ronnie too. Active player? Active player, 20 or more goals, 15 consecutive Ronnie years. Francis. No. Oh! Who's the only active player to score 20 or more goals for 15 consecutive years? 20 G's, 15 years. That's got to be Robitaille. It's not. 20 or more goals in 15 seasons. OK, we got to think of the old men, all the guys. Maybe, uh, huh? Brent Hull? Oh, that's He's a great player. <laughs> active player. Active Holly. player. Yeah. Brad Hall? Very Hall good. Is it? Noodles, you're doing good. Aiden the standing ovation. Now that's a center pass for In overtime, Brad Hall. More with star stopper Marty Turco next. And go out there and give it your best because uh, you don't know how long you're going to be given this chance. Be a player, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2003. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Marty Turco is a man gaining a lot of respect these days. The Sault Ste. Marie native has been absolutely dominant between the pipes this season. The numbers he's been putting up have him in the running for the Vezina Trophy as the league's top goalie. Here's more with the star stopper, Marty Turco. Across, Turco got over on the way out of net, look out. When did you first hear that Bell Ford signed with the Maple Leafs? You know, the general manager Doug Armstrong actually came to my house and told me the decision uh, prior to you know it becoming public. And um, you know, my my initial reaction uh, wasn't one of of relief or, or happiness. It was more of uh, seriousness of all right, now it starts. You know, everything I've been working for, all the ups and downs, the aches and pains, doesn't matter what I had done previous in my career. I'm probably going to be remembered for, for what I do from now on. And, and that's the way I've always wanted. This is all what I've been preparing for. So I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, playing. I'm going to enjoy the success and, and the down times. But I'm always going to be learning just like I have in the past. What advice did you get from former classmate and NFL quarterback Brian Greasy? He's given me some great advice, uh, you know, how to handle things. And he's always, um, he talked a lot about the media because he garners a lot of attention being a, you know, star in the NFL and, and what to expect and, and go out there and give it your best because uh, you don't know how long you're going to be given this chance to, to be a goaltender. It, you know, it could be tomorrow, knock on wood, it's, it's not, but uh, enjoy your time because uh, this is a special moment in your life. And, uh, you know, he's been inspirational for myself and uh, he's certainly been a good friend to lean on. Even though you've had great success throughout your career, played very well, especially in a backup situation, people still doubt that you're a number one goalie. Is that frustrating for you? 
So it, it, you know, it's not frust it's not frustrating <clears throat> to, to, for people to to wonder if you you know you're the number one goaltender or you know what's he going to be like. I still haven't played in an NHL playoff game to date, so uh, I look forward to all these opportunities. Yeah, you know, I got confidence in myself because of the things that I've done, but more importantly, the things that I know I can do. Um, but it, it's not frustrating because, you, you know, without doubters, uh, and people will be praising you all over, and that's probably not good for the ego, too. And you always need those motivation and, and reality checks. Uh, do I let it bother me? No, yeah, not at all, because uh, I haven't really given anybody a reason to, to say one thing or the other. But let's talk in here, and we'll, we'll see how things are going. That's all, uh, that's all you can say, and that's the only way you can really approach it. How can you describe how well you guys have started so far this season and how well you've been playing yourself, to be honest. I think last year was a disappointment, but uh, in terms of fuel and motivation, uh, I think it's only played a small role and for our success that we've had so far this year. You know, the hiring of Dave Tippett was, you know, was huge. Um, I talked to the few people about this and I told them that, you know, we didn't only just start a new chapter in Dallas Stars history, we, we almost closed the book on uh, on last year's team and, and what they had done in years before and, and started writing a new book. But, uh, I think the biggest thing is, is our leaders, you know, bringing guys like Bill Guerin uh, and Scott Young and, and Boucher and, and, and Tugnut, all, not just great hockey players with a wealth of experience, great people. Uh, and Billy's a, you know, a huge added leader in our locker room. And, uh, he made himself comfortable, he made himself uh, available, but he made himself uh, uh, one of the leaders right off the bat, and Mike's flying up there. He's in his prime, and he, he looks like it. He's he's an unbelievable player. We, we knew that, but uh, he's taking it to to another level this year. And I think it's all these combinations of our leaders leading and our best players being our best players. Uh, and then you know, for myself, just having the opportunity, something I've thought about a long time, and trying to take advantage of it, and try to learn and grow and, and build from everything that I have done and that I'm going through towards the playoffs. Uh, it's been huge. Now that All-Star is over, players have their sights set on the stretch drive and the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'd like to thank Mark Cuban, Steve Nash, and of course, our guest of honor, Marty Turco. This Lego Cup's pretty cool. Next week, we'll have more fun and games on Be A Player as I head up to New York to hook up with the Islanders star defenseman, Adrian O'Coin. Adrian and I are going to take on some of his Islander teammates in a game of paintball. Should be lots of fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Brett Lindros is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be a Player for the latest show information or to send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. This is for uh, E. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not kidding. True Hollywood. Wild story. on. Yeah. Wild on the Mavericks. That's right. Yeah.